Whenever IndyCar fans like myself think of drivers in the Roadster era, we think about drivers like Tony Benhausen, Roger Ward, all those legends back in the day. However, there's this one driver that comes to mind, and in this episode of Racing Stories, the 15th edition, we will be talking about the life, the career, the death of Vuki, and also his legacy and the Vukovich family. And what is there to say about Bill Vukovic? Drivers and fans back in the day say he's one of the best drivers in the Roadster era. He's also a mechanical genius from hard times in the Great Depression and finding ways to make racing as a living. Here's a story of Bill Vukovic. And before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to Indy Fanatics, not only for being featured in this video once again, but for giving me this idea on this episode of Racing Stories. So if you guys have not already, go subscribe to Indie Fanatics for IndyCar content. With that being said, this is the 15th episode of Racing Stories. William John Vukovic Sr. was an American Automobile Association driver who was born on December 13th, 1918. Vuki was one of eight children and grew up in Fresno. His parents, John and Mildred, had changed their name from Vukovic to Vukovic when they immigrated to the United States from Yugoslavia. John was a carpenter and owner of a farm. Unfortunately, on December 13, 1932, on Bill's 14th birthday, he committed suicide. Growing up during the Depression and money being scarce, Bill and his older brother Eli had to drop out of high school and work. Their only relief was a family Model T. Bill would drive it, chase jackrabbits through the field. Vukovic soon realized that racing cars could bring in money, and he started competing for cash in the 1930s. He came in second in his first competition, which was in a Chevrolet modified owned by Freddie Gearhart. At 18, Vukovic won his third race. Gearhart let him keep the winnings, and Vukovic would earn what he thought was terrific money, clearing $15 on good weeks. Gearhart was instrumental in helping Vukovic get out of modified racing and into midget racing career beginning in 1938. Two years later, he suffered his first serious injury in a racing accident, a broken collarbone and a burnt hand. In 1941, while mending from a crash-related injury that would keep him out of World War II, he married Esther Schmidt. Vukovic's spirit was to win at all costs. When Eli started racing, Bill warned him by telling him, quote, Don't tangle with me. Out on the track, you're just another driver, end quote. Still, the brothers' goal was to make money, and they planned to make as much as $50 a week at West Coast races. It was fierce competition, the kind of racing where drivers would barrel over others if they couldn't pass them. Vukovic raced with everything they had. He almost was into keeping into shape physically. He didn't smoke or drink, and he ran or bicycled daily. During World War II, Vukovic repaired jeeps and trucks, earning money to buy a midget from Gearhart for $750 and prepared it for the 1945 racing season. Naming the car Old Ironsides, he painted it to a bright red. Besides its wheels, Vukovic became a champion in the California midget races. Concussions, scarred hands, broken shoulders, and a broken rib didn't stop him. He did not want to lose, especially to his brother Eli, winning the United Racing Association's West Coast Championship Hanley in 1946 and 1947. Vukovic established himself as a dominant driver in midget racing. In 1948, Vuki won the Turkey Night Grand Prix at Gilmore Stadium. He won six of the last eight races before the stadium track was closed for good. In 1950, he captured a Triple A National Midget Crown paving his way to the American Motor Racing's Major League. Vukovic was known for racing midgets powered by Drake engines. The Drake was a Harley V-twin with specially built Drake water-cooled heads. His last Drake-powered midget was a Curtis Craft that was built by Ed and Zeke Justice, the Justice Brothers, in their shop in Glendale from a Curtis kit. Previous to this car, Vukovic drove a frame rail midget that was also powered by a Drake engine. With midget racing losing its appeal to the fans, the best drivers like Walt Faulkner, Andy Linden, and Manny Ayula, they went to IndyCar racing. While Bill Vukovic didn't seem interested in racing anything besides midgets, he changed his mind when he got a ride as a substitute driver for the Indy 500. However, his old car wasn't able to qualify for the race. 
Vukovic returned in 1951 for the sponsor, Pete Salemi, from Cleveland. His car, a Centro Excavating Special. After starting in the 20th spot, he climbed to 10th place, 15 laps into the race. But his car lasted just 29 laps as a broken oil tank knocked him from the race. While he earned only $750 for finishing 29th, Vukovic was noticed by millionaire sportsman Howard Keck, who needed a replacement for the retiring Mari Rose, a three-time winner of the Indy 500. Vukovic respected Keck and left midget racing after the 1951 season. At the following year's Indy 500, Vukovic qualified Keck's car in the third row. He was leading the race when a quarter-inch pin on the steering arm gave out on the 192nd lap of the race, sending his car into the wall and allowing Troy Rotman to surge past him and win the race. While he was out of the race, he finished 17th. Vukovic realized that Indy was easily within his reach. Driving a fuel injection special, Vukovic dominated the 1953 and 1954 races. The next year, the man nicknamed both the Mad Russian for his charging driving style and the Silent Serb for his cool demeanor, sought to become the first driver to win three consecutive Indy 500s. In 1953, driving a fuel injection special, Vuki started on pole with the speed of 138.392 miles per hour. Bill Vukovic took his KK500A Offenhauser to victory after dominating the race by leading 195 of 200 laps. His astounding performance netted him $89,486. Vuki was one of five drivers to finish the 500 without relief on the 130 degree track. The race was known as the hottest Indy 500. In 1954, Vukovic's Offenhauser 4.5 was even faster. Despite starting from 19th position, he set an Indy 500 record by averaging 130.84 miles per hour as he became the third driver to win back-to-back -back Indy 500s after leading 90 of the 200 laps. He won $74,934. While Vukovic declined offers of big money that year, he accepted the invitation to drive the Pan American Road Race that fall. His driving and personal styles became evident during that race in Mexico, when Vukovic terrified his co-driver, Vern Huell. The mad Russian cut corners as he wound through the dangerous mountain course. Vukovic and Huell were running second in their class in the 1,908 mile race, when they went off the road at the Sierra Madre Mountains and barely escaped with their lives. Keck dropped out of the racing in 1955 and released Vukovic to Lindsay Hopkins, the owner of a new roadster. Vukovic accepted but insisted that his mechanics come along. With his new owner and new car, Vukovic would meet only tragedy at the Indy 500. Driving his Lindsay Hopkins special, Vukovic took off where he left off the previous year and took a huge lead. Then on lap 57, Bill Vukovic was entering turn two, trailing three slower cars driven by Roger Ward, Al Keller and Johnny Boyd when Ward's car hit the backstretch outer wall and flipped, resting in the middle of the track as a result of the broken axle. Keller swerving into the infield to avoid Ward lost control and slid back onto the track, striking Boyd's car and pushing it into Vukovic's path. After his car went over the outside wall and became airborne, it cartwheeled through the air multiple times, landing on top of a group of parked cars before coming to rest upside down and bursting into flames. The cockpit side of his car struck a low bridge near turn two when it was airborne. Boyd's car also flipped over and landed upside down as well. As the car burned, Ed Elysian stopped his undamaged car and raced towards Vukovic in an attempt to save him. It did not matter. Vukovic had perished instantly. Two spectators were also injured when Vukovic's car landed on their Jeep. Vukovic was the second defending Indy 500 champion to die during the race following Floyd Roberts in 1939 and the only former winner to have been killed while leading. Before the flames from the car reached him, Vukovic was already dead from a fracture at the base of his skull. He was 36 years old at the time of his death. The crash started off with Jack McGrath having a broken magneto. Johnny Boyd, Roger Ward, and L. Keller were also part of the crash. Ed Elysian stopped his car on the infield and ran across the track in an attempt to help Vuki. Unfortunately, like Mike and Steven said, Vuki died. Before the 1955 Indy 500 race, he wouldn't normally call his wife. However, he did, asking when she would be at the track. At the start of the race, he waved at her. Bill Vukovic was a Hall of Fame driver. He was known for his intensity and will to win. A short 
stocky man. Some said with bitterness in his eyes. He enjoys psyching out other rivals. He also was a master mechanic and refined science of the car setup. Two-time Indy 500 champion Roger Ward said, quote, Bill Vukovic was probably the greatest actual driver we have ever known in terms of his skills and determination. Not only Roger says it, but several other drivers of Vukovic's generation have referred to him as the greatest effort in American motorsports. In 22 starts in the AAA Indy Car Series, he had four wins, six top fives, nine top tens, three poles, and an average of 12.8. Back in the day when you're racing at the Indy 500, it counted for points in Formula One. Bill was gone, but the Vukovic name lived on. Vuki's son, Bill Vukovic II, and his grandson, Bill Vukovic III, also competed in the Indy 500. Bill's second best finish was second in the 1973 Indy 500, which I did a story on. If possible, feel free to check out that story. And Bill the third was named the 1988 Indianapolis 500 Rookie of the Year. Unfortunately, on November 5th, 1990, Bill the third died from a crash during practice for the CRA race at Mesa Marin Raceway. Although Bill has won the Indy 500 twice and the 1950 AAA National Midget Championship, he also won four awards. In 1972, Bill Vukovic was inducted into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Fame. In 1991, he was inducted into the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. In 1990, he was inducted into the National Midget Auto Racing Hall of Fame. And in 1992, he was inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America. Although Bill was gone way too soon, he is still a legend in IndyCar and the Indianapolis 500 to this day. Race fans look back at him as legend and one of the greatest drivers in Roadster era. His name will live on forever. Hey everybody, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Stories. It was very fun to make. It was very awesome to look back at old IndyCar stories and old legends like Bill Vukovic. I want to give a shout out once again to Indy Fanatics for not being featured in this video but for giving me this idea. So to repay them back and all that fun stuff... I want them to do their outro on my video. So take it away, boys. Well, thanks for having us on, Ian. It was really great to take the time and look into the career of Bill Vukovic, a true American open wheel racing legend. Make sure if you haven't already to subscribe to Ian's channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. So for now, you indie fans, keep racing. Yeah.